So recently we heard that the MGM Amazon deal was done, over, finito, finalized, right? Well, maybe not so fast. And as we've started to hear that it really doesn't matter if the deal's done or not, if there's any inkling of an issue when it comes to, well, antitrust, that can happen at any time. Let's take a look. Here we go. Once again, we're looking at our friends over at the Variety Intelligence platform and saying, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, making a point that I tried to make a week ago, well, maybe not that long ago, four or five days ago, is that even if the deal's finalized with MGM and Amazon, it's not really a done deal. In fact, anytime two companies merge and it looks like at the few years even into it, it's not going to be something that's legal, well, they break things up all over again. So here we go. From the story, is Amagazon really a done deal? Don't bet on it. Haha, ha, they tried to combine the two names anyway. Uh, in the article, we're going to talk about how the FTC can still take action, why Amazon has a regulatory target on its back, and what, what the next steps FTC Chief uh, Lena Khan could take. And here we go. Amazon may have closed its $8.4 billion deal to acquire MGM, but the future of these companies is wide open, of course. With the big question on Capitol Hill is whether the Federal Trade Commission, which could have challenged the transaction, but elected to let the deadline expire, will still move to block the deal even after it closes, which, of course, they can absolutely do. This is not a matter of idle speculation. An FTC spokesperson made that abundantly clear in a statement issued last week after the expiration. We reiterate, the commission does not approve transactions and may challenge a deal at any time if it determines that it violates the law." End quote. It's an option that must be under consideration by FTC Chief Lena Khan, a notorious longtime critic of Amazon who has expected to be an aggressive antitrust opponent to the company. No kidding. She hasn't pounced yet, in part because there's currently a holdup at the FTC regarding securing the confirmation of a fifth commissioner, which we've actually talked about here on the channel, that would give her a left-leaning majority. I'm not sure why that matters at all, and I don't think politics should enter into anything at the Federal Trade Commission, but hey, that's just me. It's quite probable a Democrat comes in to break the 2-2 tie, giving Khan the green light she needs to block Amazon's MGM bid even after the deadline. Hmm. If the prospect of this deal getting unwound is weighing on anyone at Amazon Studios, it didn't seem like it judging from the closed door town hall company hosted last week at its Culver City headquarters. As Amazon moves full steam ahead, the focus is less on what Khan will do next month as, as it is on M M MGM chieftains like Michael DeLuca and Mark Barnett. Good choices to keep those guys, uh, whose days operating independently are likely numbered as Amazon Studio streaming VP Mike Hopkins um, figures out how to integrate the two entities. Don't. Let them run their own thing and you will come out better in the end. Not only that, if the deal does get unwound, it would save them a lot of hassle. Hey, just my opinion. While the company has signaled that no layoffs would occur, it's hard to believe MGM will simply operate separately from the in-house studio without at least some leadership changes, and that could leave DeLuca and or Burnett the odd men out. That would be stupid. Huh. With a $6.5 billion price tag along with a $2 billion debt, this was not a small purchase even for a colossus like Amazon. MGM is second only to Whole Foods in acquisition size for the company, which paid $14.6 billion for the grocer in 2017. Let me tell you, Whole Foods may be losing favor in the near future. Probably another story, although it's not entertainment related. 
I'll keep going. And is far larger than anything else on Jeff Bezos' long shopping list. No other big tech firm did more M&A, see the chart, we're gonna look at the chart, between 2019 and 2021. Here's the deal logic chart right here. As you can see, wow. This year though, so far only Alphabet. We'll have to see what happens. I mean, Amazon just went bananas. Uh, he's paying a hefty premium, estimated to be 40% more than what MGM could have attracted from other buyers. Well, there's a reason for that. There's some catalog and distribution agreements that are valuable. Looked at in a vacuum, MGM would seem too small to trip antitrust alarms. It's not as if Amazon is swallowing a true conglomerate like Disney. Nevertheless, acquiring MGM has never been considered a slam dunk because Amazon has a massive regulatory target, a massive regulatory target on its back due to its sheer size and questionable tactics, which we've talked about here. Um, on many other fronts. Let's just put it that way. Again, another breakdown from the DOJ FTC cases that we've talked about before in regards to this. But it's also possible that Amazon will be left unrestricted, which calls into question whether, with all the speculation regarding the current administration in the White House, intensifying more scrutiny on monopolistic M&A moves, Washington is going to be all bark and no bite. Why would they change? They've been that way for a long time. We'll have to see. Down the line, it's inconceivable that Khan and the FTC, or the Justice Department for that matter, will let too much time go by without making an example of one Amazon deal or another. In other words, it's inevitable that they get, you know, pinned on something. We'll see. As long as MGM fits in the crosshairs, a deal that might seem to be closed is anything but. That's pretty decent writing by this writer. Thank you for the story, by the way. But the question remains, is this something that will be permanently done? I don't know. The DOJ has been looking at Amazon for quite some time. I've given you a bunch of stories over the past several months that really does put the crosshairs on Amazon. Uh, there's a reason for that, and they're really placing some scrutiny on some of their business practices, uh, you know, partner distribution stuff or delivered by Amazon things that, you know, also were flagged for price fixing, which is not a good thing. There's some cause for concern. Amazon and M MGM maybe won't get called into question, but it very well could. And, uh, it just seems like none of these uh, acquisitions are going to be firm, at least not for some time. And uh, I have a feeling that the uh, FTC and DOJ is uh, looking to, uh, well, flex their uh, individual, if not collective, muscles. So we'll have to see. But what do you think? Do you think there's any chance that the uh, FTC decides to uh, pull the string on this deal? You think they'll uh, they'll uh, say, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna walk we're gonna walk that one back for you because uh, it's anti-competitive. Or do you think it'll continue on as if nothing happened? Do you think Amazon might be uh, targeted for something else? I think they will be, by the way. Uh, and uh, do you think this will like cool the market a little bit if it does happen with all these other M and A's, right? All these other mergers and acquisitions. I think if this happens, it could remove the starch from the sales, so to speak. But. Like I said, please let me know what you think down in the comments section below, and uh, hopefully we can have a conversation on it. If you didn't get a chance last week to watch the uh, AI video that I put together with Mr. Grant Gregory, uh, you really should. That's that's the one video last week that really got some attention, and for good reason, because it's kind of scary. Uh, and if you did see it and didn't share it out, consider doing that. Speaking of which, feel free to share out this video. That would be tremendous. Of course, you can also hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please do so. And, uh, you know, if those comments, like I said, engagement. And that brings us to the topic I always talk about, the support of independent creators. We absolutely need to be doing that as, as much as we possibly can. Right now, the AI algorithm that exists here on the Alphabet platform, the YouTube platform, is uh, geared towards corporate content creators and not towards the independent folks. So it is always in their best interest if you give them a like, you give them a share, you subscribe if you're not because you like their content, and of course, you know, make comments on their videos as well. And with that being said, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, wash your hands, of course, because it is good hygiene. It really is. And if I catch you coming out of the bathroom not doing it, you're gonna get a talking to. 
And until next time, bye. Thanks for visiting today. Be sure you're subscribed and hit that for alerts. Yay! Of course, like and share all of the videos that you can as it helps with the algorithm. Have a great day.